Hey, what's up everybody? Last week I posted a video on the MacBook 14 inch M4 Max model versus the Asus Zephyrus G14 2024 with the 4070 card. Well, this week I have the Asus Zephyrus G14 2025 with the 5080 card, which should be a lot faster than last year's 4070 card, especially for the video editing workflows. The 2025 version comes with the new Nvidia cards, which is the 5080, which has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is a big increase over my 4070 that I tried last time. This year also features an upgraded processor, which is the Ryzen AI9, 300 series processor with the HX370. That means it has 12 cores and 5.1 gigahertz versus the eight cores of my 2024 model, and it should be more efficient and faster in a lot of workloads. It comes with the same great high resolution OLED panel, which is 2880 by 1800, 500 nits, which is the same as my 2024 model, but I didn't have a problem with the display. I'm also excited because this year's model comes with an upgraded cooling system, which has bigger heat pipes and second generation fans, which hopefully will keep it cool when I'm on the go. There have been initial reviews online and a lot of benchmarks, but there was also an Nvidia driver released. And I think a lot of the benchmarks that were done didn't use the 5080 to its full potential due to that driver error. So I'm excited to see how well this runs in my workflow. So let's go ahead and unbox it and check it out. I picked this one up at Best Buy and it costs about $3,200 plus taxes. So we have the GA403W, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, the Ryzen AI9 HX370. It's got a two terabyte PCIe Gen 4 SSD. It's got 32 gigs of RAM, Wi-Fi 7, uh, Windows 11 Home Edition. And yeah, I think that's about all the important details. Let's go ahead and open this up. So I do still have the Samsung 9100 4 terabyte SSD Gen 5. I don't think it will get faster than the last time I benchmarked it, but it would be a good fit for this laptop if I decide to use it for video editing just because of the four terabytes capacity. And it is one of the fastest SSDs available and it has a five year warranty. If you are interested in SSD, definitely check it out. I put a link below. All right, so let's open this up. Kind of an odd box. We have a box within a box. Yeah, and this box is about the size of a laptop. Let's see what's in here. All right, and there it is. And so we'll just pull this out of here and this looks uh, very similar to the 2024 model. So the case looks nearly identical. You see the port selection here. We have the power adapter, the HDMI, the USB-C, the USB-A headphone jack. And on the other side, we have the micro SD, the USB-A and USB-C ports. And let's see what's in here. We got warranty card, manual, manual booklet says how to hit the power button. It's good. And the other side of the box here, you can see we got the power brick. It's a 200 watt adapter, which should enable it to run at full speed while playing games and all that while not depleting the battery. So let's go ahead and plug this in. There we go. Have a nice little cover there to keep the screen safe during shipping. And we're powering it on. Let's see what happens. So first impressions are the chassis is. It's definitely thin and light, and it seems to be built pretty sturdy. Um, yeah, this the hinge feels good. The metal is right now cool to the touch. We'll see if that stays that way. The keyboard, keyboard feels nice and springy, easy to type on. Certainly I can navigate this really easy. And the fans have not popped on yet, so that's a good sign. So sometimes when I boot these up, the fans are immediately going and you can just hear them already and you know it's going to be like a very loud laptop. So far, no fans. That's cool. We're going to go ahead and set up Microsoft here. Normally when I'm just sitting here setting up Windows, I cut this part out. Uh, however, right now what I have is I cannot connect to my Wi-Fi network after booting it up. So uh, I've tried twice, it can't do it. So we're going to go ahead and reboot and give it one more chance, but that's not good. Uh, I must have a hundred different devices in my network from smart plugs to light bulbs to MacBooks to PC laptops. I never have an issue, so uh, I think my network is fine. So we're gonna hope that, that was just like a firmware glitch. For those who dare, 
to connect to Wi-Fi. This is also an official AI PC, so we do have a dedicated co-pilot key. So I don't really use these keys that much, uh, but it's there. And I think that you can still use function and then get the details menu right there too. Moment of truth, we're checking the network requirements. It's got a blue bar going. It's attempting to connect. The blue bar is still going. Come on, Asus. I wanna, I wanna play with this laptop, that'd be fun. Make it happen. Can you connect to the network? And it did, it connected to the network. Okay, so that must that first time I must have hit a button or something maybe, or did something to make that not connect, but it did connect this time. Now we're checking updates, so I'll go ahead and I'll meet you guys at the end. It's doing its normal upgrading Windows thing and I wanted to show some of these. So it's advertising Copilot, which we got the Copilot button and that comes with Windows, but you know, it's kind of an open AI wrapper. And then we have Windows Recall, which was a feature they announced uh, over a year ago, but it never really made it out. And basically it's gonna take screenshots of things and let you search through what you've done, but it's really unproven. And so I think a lot of the people who are watching this channel are probably gonna wanna disable some of these features. And we'll have to see if the screen lets me do that or not. Uh, we also have Co-Creator and this lets us create things in Paint. Now this does have an AI processor, but it's not gonna be able to fit like the biggest and best image models compared to OpenAI. So some of the results you see here are not gonna be run locally, but they'd have to be run on a remote server to achieve that. It also can translate and caption audio and video in real time. That might run on the NPU. I'm not sure uh, exactly which model they're using. In the past, uh, me and my friends, we've used Whisper, and we've used that to capture audio and then transcribe it on the device. While installing Windows also, the fans finally went on. So I can hear the fan now, it's going. It downloaded a bunch of updates and it's installing them. And so I assume it's using a lot of processing power to do that and trying to cool it off while going. All right, so we're in the Windows setup screen. We're gonna go ahead and enter a Microsoft account. We get the option for Face ID. We'll go ahead and set that up with me and the camera here. It just says, don't move. There we go. Create a pin code. And so when we're setting up windows. I leave those two on. I turn off diagnostic data, inking and typing and tailor experiences. I don't see any new toggles here yet to disable some of those AI features. It's a pretty standard windows unboxing experience. Uh, we have them asking to collect data with edge. Uh, I say no to this because there's no reason that they need to do that. Uh, decline Microsoft 365, decline again, and go ahead and click next. And that will get us through most of the nags, I think. Oh, there's a new one, Game Pass, okay. Uh, there is a free uh, month of Game Pass with new PCs. Here's the new Windows Recall feature. You might like this. Uh, I personally am gonna disable it just because I don't really see the utility in it and I don't also want it running and uh, either taking battery or impacting performance in any way or even using space for that matter. It just doesn't seem useful to me. So I'm gonna say don't do that and we're in. So we have Windows installed and uh, just the basic stock and we can go ahead and do a task manager and we can see some of the system. So we'll go here and we have the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 with the Radeon 890M integrated graphics. And then right here we have our NVIDIA 5080 laptop GPU, and that has the 16 gigs of RAM. And we also have the NPU here. And yeah, let's go ahead and check this out. So the first thing we're gonna do, much to Microsoft's dismay, is we're going to download Chrome. And that's because I wanna run a benchmark on here, make sure it's the same as last time I ran it. So last time I ran this, the MacBook M4 destroyed the Asus, but they were both on battery power. This time I'm plugged in, and so I just wanna see with the web speed meter exactly where we land uh, with a fresh PC plugged in, ready to go. And so we'll go ahead and pull up speed meter and do start test, and see how fast this goes. This is the speed meter 3.1 test. And that's not a bad result. So the Apple MacBooks, the M4 series, are in the 40s on these tests. And the last laptop on battery was under 20. So 33.8 is a big improvement over the last generation. 
So once I had the laptop set up, the next thing I did is I installed Steam and then I installed X4. I like X4 because it's really hard to run on laptops and it's pretty demanding on the CPU and GPU, especially at higher resolutions. And so I set it to use the AI scaling DLSS. And then as I was starting to play it, it just hard rebooted. So the laptop went off and I was greeted with the BIOS screen again. So for now, I have to say goodbye to the G14 and return to Best Buy and see what other laptops are out there that could meet my needs. I was hopeful that this would be the MacBook killer and that I wouldn't need to use all my iOS and Mac OS stuff and I could just kind of seamlessly switch over. But so far with two laptops and two different tries, neither one really met my needs, which is a bummer because I was really hopeful that this would be the one because it is so thin, light, portable, well-built, and it's got a great screen. It's in theory got great cooling. It's got a really powerful GPU. And I think if you can get one that doesn't crash, it's probably a good choice for a lot of people out there. So let me know in the comments below if you have a suggestion on a laptop I should try. I generally like the 14 inch size because I can use it like on an airplane tray and travel with it easy. However, I am willing to go up to 16 inches and see if that will work uh, because most times I'm not on a plane. I'm at a desk or I'm at a coffee shop or somewhere that has a lot more space available. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.